Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Zombie Uprising video. So, in the past, I previously worked, I previously made a video on this game. Basically, it was supposed to be a guide video to this game, if, if you're new. However, it just hasn't sat right with me ever since I did it. I just had some problems with it, like some of the information, so... Yeah, I'm gonna be remaking it for you guys, alright? Okay, so here we are. We'll start out in the casual, easy mode, alright? So we'll go for the special offer. Now, if it gives you daily rewards when you first start, you can come here and get case. Just hit open all. Oh, look at that. We got an iron case, alright? Now, what you're gonna wanna do is also join the group that uh, created this game because you get some extra perks and stuff like uh... you'll have like a few guns when you start out all right you'll have the shotgun you'll have the m1683 assault rifle you'll have the sv98 sniper rifle all right yeah you have the shotgun Assault Rifle, Sniper Rifle, and you'll also have the PDW-R Personal Defense Weapon, or PDW, alright? Also the M9 Pistol, RPG-7, MK2 Grenade, and I think you'll have the perk. I don't remember if it starts you out with that, but anyway, I would highly recommend using either of these, you know? Honestly, both of them have the same damage and stuff, like, same, da same damage, same fire rate. If anything, this just has a little bit more, a little bit faster reload. So, yeah, that's basically what you'll have on you when you start out. So, you'll have your choice of those weapons. Sniper rifle's good if you're on a really large open map where you can basically get a really open space. Shotgun is good for close quarters combat. But yeah, I would definitely recommend the Assault Rifle and the PDW. So yeah, I'm gonna go get us somewhere around level, like around one, so I can show you exactly what to do on new games. Alright, so here we are, round two, I couldn't find one for round one, but yeah. Basically, first order of business is these, these sphere things, alright? They are called the Soul Spheres, alright? You're gonna wanna fill them ASAP, right? As soon as you possibly can. Also, don't forget to come to this uh, care package thing. But yeah, fill those. There's four of them, one in each corner. There's you have blue, green, red, and purple. All right. Now, I would highly recommend filling up uh, purple and green first because they can be harder, the harder ones to fill. In like later in like certain maps like one of the horde maps is like really hard to fill them depending on who you're joined with all right but yeah anyway up here as you can see you got points and cash now the points are really important right now because with points you can buy these vending machines they will make sh they will definitely make the game a lot easier first one you're going to want to get is the blue the walla cola because it increases your speed by like 10 percent which may not sound like much, but trust me, it is a huge help. So yeah, basically just work on filling the soul spheres and use the points to buy the vending machines. And you're, I would highly recommend trying to work with your team, because this isn't PvP, alright? You are basically stuck on a team with four players. Whether they're good or bad, well, that just depends on your luck. But yeah. But yeah, try to lead them close to the soul sphere and then kill the zombie. That'll make things a lot easier for yourself. And also, if someone gets knocked down, do try to revive them. Right. We're on a, one of the more, one of the smaller maps. I'm, not really a fan of this map, but 
early on, I would definitely say small maps like this are really good because you can more easily fill the soul spheres. But yeah, fill them up. All right. Now we got another. We got four thousand points. That's really good because right now we can go for the red vending machine. I don't remember exactly where. Ah, here it is. Walked right by it a few times. But yeah, it literally doubles your health. All right, it takes you from one hundred health to two hundred is really good so yeah now you're basically a much faster tank all right because like you might be thinking you know oh well uh, going for you know I might as well just go for the double health I'll be harder to kill you'll be you can take more hits but you'll still be vulnerable because like yeah, I mean, you'll be able to take more hits, but if you're just able to outrun them entirely, you aren't going to take any damage at all. So it's either take some damage, you know, it's either take some damage or take no damage at all. Like, wh which would you rather do? And then if you get them both, you're basically just a really fast tank, and you're just way harder to kill. Like, I mean, this is the starter gun with no modifications, which means it's just as... I'm dealing just as much damage as someone with, like... I'm dealing just as much damage as someone with, um... Who's literally just started. Alright. So, yeah. Now we got another 3,000 points. Now, while we're here working on these, let's talk about the other weapons that... Now, in groups... Now, you're, this is this primary weapon, this is your main. However, if you're stuck in a group like this one, use the rocket. Don't just use it on single targets, because it has area of effect. The real strength of this weapon is its area of effect. So save your rockets, because you only have a limited amount. Save them for larger groups handle the stragglers with your primary weapon, all right? All right, now the pistol. Pistol is something you automatically switch to in, uh, when you get knocked down, all right? When you need to be revived, yeah. Basically, when you die, before you truly die, you'll need to be revived. The pistol and the knife are the only two weapons you can really use during that. Alright, so really, it's also okay for if you, you know, you're out of ammo in your primary and your rocket, you know, just stick with the pistol. But yeah, other than that, it's not supposed to be a main weapon. Alright, so the melee deals a lot of damage, but the problem is... It has terrible range. Now, well, now, one thing a lot of players like to do is they like to run up on enemies, like run into groups, and then just start spamming melee. But as you can see, we're already at like 35% health. Or, yeah, we're already down for like 45 health. All right. It's not a good item to use as a main weapon, like in any situation, because the range just sucks. So... However, there are two instances in which it is actually a useful main. First off, is by these barricades. As you can see, I'm just standing behind the barricade, and I can just stab things. And of course, for small stragglers. You know, I mean, but yeah. I mean, if you can time it right, you can just stab them without taking damage. But honestly, if you want to main with melee, go get. You better get a better one. All right. It costs cash and stuff, you know. But yeah, if you're gonna use, if you've got the knife, the only thing you can use it for is stabbing them through barricades. And if you're on the ground and you need to be revived and there's a bunch of zombies around you, fight them with the knife. All right. Because it deals a lot of damage, but the range is just terrible. So do not rely on. Right? 
If you want to get a better weapon, I would definitely say the laser saber is a good option. Alright, it's just 75,000 and, you know, it gives you some more range. More range than the knife. But still, not the best weapon to go into hordes with, alright? Even if you get this, I would not recommend running into, like, large groups. As you can see, we took damage for, like, no reason. We could just... See, I just wanted to point that out about the melee. So yeah, now I'll show you guys what to do in boss rounds. Anyway, up next is the boss round. There are two types of boss rounds. You've got a horde and you've got a boss. We'll see what we get. Alright, now this is a boss. Now the knife... Now, we didn't fill up the soul spheres, so what you're going to want to do is fill them up really quickly. If you've been, if you've done everything I've mentioned up to this point, like getting the red and blue vending machines, you should be capable, fully capable of surviving this round, easily. Like, this is going to be rather, yeah, this is actually going to be easy. As you can see, granted, you're not going to be invincible, right? Unless you're hacking or something, you're not going to be invincible. But you can very easily outrun pretty much anything that comes your way, alright? We got blue, and... So, yeah, we're going to get that, and that will make this boss so much easier to kill. Especially with the times two damage. All right, as you can see, we put some distance between us and them. We can revive him. Also, he somehow got revived because uh, I guess we had another player. So yeah. basically, just try to avoid most of the attacks. Aim for his head because that deals double damage, and then combined with that does also stack with the times two damage. You know, but yeah. Basically, just always be moving. Don't stand still, or else you're gonna die. Alright, just... If you stand still and just let them hit you, you're gonna die. Even with the times two health. Alright, we're out of ammo. So there's three things you can do when you're out of ammo. In your primary weapon. You can go to this machine, which will give you a random gun, but you can go with your pistol, which I don't exactly recommend as your first choice, but I mean, if you don't have any points or anything, it's all you got. Or three, you can open up your armory real quick, and that will give you more ammo. It'll restock all your ammo. And yeah, there you go. He's dead. Now, once he's dead, you get to choose between two maps. I would highly recommend at this point to go for an open map, like Last Lockup or Dead Suburbs. Um, the reason you're going to want a large map is because larger maps are open. And the more open a map is, the easier it is for you to kill enemies at a distance. Because the zombies, they fight close range. So running in, relying completely on close range attacks, bad idea. Unless you're standing at a barricade like this. You know, just... Yeah, that's okay. But, you know. Long range map like this? Yeah. Definitely. Definitely, um, try to... You know. Definitely try to go for a long-range map like this after, for, uh, after the first boss fight. Alright? And yeah, for many bosses, a lot of players will just run in, dealing, just running in and attacking like that. Look, 
yeah, they'll just try and do this, you know. As you can see, I'm, like, already, like, half health, alright? Yeah, he's dead, but I'm, like, half health. Like, you saw how much damage that did to me. That's a bad strategy. Do not do that. Instead, keep your distance and kill them, alright? Keep your distance, moving backwards, kind of keeping an eye on where you're going. If your health starts to get too low, turn around and run to avoid anything else hitting you. All right, now, another vending machine you're going to want to get early on is this one, because if this is self-revive, if you get knocked down, it will revive you automatically, and it will also let you revive other players, like, much faster. All right, so basically, as long as you always have one of these, you will never lose. However, it's also the most expensive vending machine, which I think is fair. 4,000 points, so you're always going to want 4,000 points in your in your uh, stockpile there. Next up, let's talk about another noob strategy and how people mess it up. This machine is the mystery machine. It lets you purchase a random gun for 750 points. Alright? You have no say in what the gun is, and you can get some pretty decent firepower from that. Like, the most common one I see players going for is the minigun. Which is a good option. Minigun is pretty good in this game. Alright? I mean, it's a freaking minigun. Who wouldn't want one? So, yeah, we're gonna see what I... Now, typically what I see people do is as soon as they get 750 points at the start of the game, they'll run straight to this machine and spend everything they got on this. And they'll just keep doing that over and over and over again. And that's a huge mistake. First off... First, spend your points on getting speed. Then, get health. Alright, we got a M240. So yeah. If you wanna... And then, save your point, save 4,000 points for the Pack-A-Punch. Alright, which we did. As long as you get your primary weapon upgraded. That's... Then, you can spend points on getting this. I would recommend getting a vent. I'd recommend maybe spending 750, you know, getting one or two guns out of this machine and then saving for the next vending machine. Then one or two more guns out of this, then another vending machine. All right? That way, you, that way you're still getting a good amount of guns while making yourself more powerful because even if you get a terrible gun from that, you'll still have, you know, you'll still be strong enough to survive with just the base equipment. Alright. Yeah, that dude did it wrong. Because as you can see, that that zombie was almost dead. He took damage for no reason. Do not do that. Another thing that players like to spend a lot of points on, just like over and over again, is the turret. Turrets are good, but I would highly recommend waiting until after you have all the soul spheres filled. Because on a lot of the maps, the turrets will actually kill the zombies before they get close enough to the soul spheres, thus preventing the spheres from being filled in the first place, which is top priority early on. So, fill the spheres, then use the turrets for later rounds. Because, I mean, the early rounds where you're filling the spheres, they're easy anyway. So, the turrets aren't exactly very useful in the first place. So yeah, but you know, if you got them filled, go ahead and spend the points after you're upgraded, alright? Once you got some upgrades and you got basically, basically if you can, where you're doing a decent amount of damage, you know, with the speed and health upgrade and the pack-a-punch upgrade, then you can spend points on the turret and mystery machine. All right. Oh yeah, Mountain Fortress. All right, this is the Horde map. Now, there is a bug where the Soul Spheres do have to be, um, they do look empty once the map changes. Basically just get one kill at each and it should restore them to what they were before. So what you're gonna wanna do, what most players do is they'll run up straight they'll run up with their melee trying to stab anything that comes in 
don't do that. What you're going to want to do is stand at a distance and shoot at anything that comes out. As you can see, those three just immediately fill. And it looks to me like they did a good job of filling the spheres before we got here. So, good job to these guys. And they're also keeping their distance. You might get some of uh, these power-up things, which, you know, are definitely good to grab. So definitely run in and grab it and get out. Now he's trying to rely on melee. Not a good idea here. So yeah, just stand at a distance. Use the speed boost. Because even if you get here right before the map starts, or, you know, yeah, you'll spawn back here. You won't have to deal too much with them. So you can literally just stand up here. And you can see where... Alright, they do need us down there. So, yeah. Let's see, we're just gonna... I don't know if I'll be able to revive them, but I'm gonna try. Yeah, see, already out of control. The moment we walked away, it's out of control. So what we'll do is we'll sort of herd them, all right? I'm gonna herd them back here and then, bam, we'll rock it. And as you can see, I'm using speed to find sort of an opening in the group. And then, yeah. As you can see, we're only taking minimal damage while dealing with a crap ton of enemies. Now this strategy only works when there's only, when there's one player doing it. If you get two players in, it will mess up their pathfinding and make them harder to control. So definitely only do this solo. Or like with other players standing back a bit. Alright. Like it's not impossible with other players, it's just harder to predict where they're going to move. Alright, now we can go for the upgrade. The pack of punch. So yeah, keep your distance. Don't run in too close. Don't run in melee blazing. Use the rocket and explosives on groups. And yeah. See, I'm using the speed boost only to sort of find the openings. I mean, you'll you'll get hit. Like, it's going to happen. But, you know, using the speed boost, we kind of mitigate that. And yeah, that's it. Horde defeated. So yeah, here we are in the armory. Might as well get the cases left. And just go into chess every time. Open any chest you have every time you're in the screen. But go to, to our loadout. Now, we can look at mods. As you can see, each weapon has its own level. And the level goes up every time you kill something with the enemy, or every time you, you know, repair a barricade. You'll get some experience, alright? Now, what mods do is, when you reach a certain level, you can put the mod on the gun. Alright? And there's all sorts of different mods you can get. Alright? And then every time you prestige, you get a new upgrade. Alright? You know, up to four prestige, you can get like four different upgrades for it. But yeah, you can get all, you can really mod the crap out of this. So yeah, you can buy the upgrades. As you can see, we can buy this for 3,500 or 
if we get the gun up to level 44, we get it for free. Like all of these, I didn't buy any of these upgrades. I got them for free by leveling up the gun. So yeah, that's actually a really nice feature. So you can like really just throw all of them on there. When it comes to when it comes to ammunition, don't use the RIP round. Use armor piercing because that is your best friend against the mini bosses. Yeah, it does plus 11%. It does 6% more damage than the armor piercing, but the armor piercing just completely ignore armor. Alright, the rest of them I would definitely say just to like hold off on, just get them as you level up. And you know, just save your money for extra guns. Now, let's say you got some money for a gun on here, for one of these guns. Which one I personally would recommend going with the LSAT, alright? LSAT. It's a light machine gun. I mean, you've got a sniper rifle, all right, which lets you deal damage at range. You've got the shotgun, which lets you deal close range damage, and then you got the PDWR. So yeah, I mean, you could go for the carbine or you could go for a marksman rifle, but I would definitely recommend going with a light machine gun, personally. All right, I just find that spamming enemies with as many bullets as you possibly can is the strongest strategy. It's the easiest strategy at least. Alright, so yeah, definitely go with the LSAT second when you can buy a gun. Alright, so yeah, definitely stick with, so yeah, stick with the M16 until you can get with the, or the PDWR until you can get the LSAT. Then everything else will be a lot better. If you prefer shotguns, alright, that's fine. Shotguns are okay as well, they just aren't good at range. If you prefer sniper rifles, don't use sniper rifles unless it's like, unless you're fighting over a really long distance, alright? If you're fighting at close range, do not use a sniper rifle. Use either a shotgun or a machine gun. Would not recommend the M4 because it's a burst fire, which burst fire can do, can be okay, but honestly, I don't like it, personally. So yeah, stick with the M16A3 then buy the LSAT, and then just go from there, alright? Sticking with, like, light machine guns, PDWs, and, you know, anything that's, like, fully automatic. When you get to Tier 9, you're gonna see some interesting guns. You'll find the minigun, which is definitely a good one to go with, alright? If you prefer shotguns, I would definitely recommend the AA-12, as it is a fully automatic shotgun. There's also another fully automatic here in um, Tier 8, but yeah, the AA-12, if you've seen my Block City War videos, you know I like this gun, alright? It's a really good shotgun, right? But yeah, you can get the minigun, which is also extremely good, because it's, you know, it's a freaking minigun. If you're on Tier 10, I would highly recommend the MG42 for against regular enemies, and then go with the M2HB against bosses. I don't know why, but what I've noticed is that this gun, like, near insta kills any normal mobs, but the M2HB kills bosses faster than this one, right? Right? Then when you get to tier 11, you got like a sniper, light machine gun, shotgun. They'll be adding more, I'm sure, in the future, but yeah. Light machine gun basically just melts everything, you know. It's very simple like that, because there's just like not, not much here anyway. So, yeah. If you can get this gun, this gun, and this gun from the mystery machine, definitely use them. Alright, do not switch them out for the minigun because these are actually better than the minigun all right this thing puts the minigun to freaking shame when it when it comes to like you know how fast enemies get melted all right so yeah next up we have the event tier now the event tier i think we've mentioned all right you get events all right events will occasionally happen and you can basically get all sorts of things, like you can get chests, you can get weapons on this list. You can get these 
event tokens. All right, it is the battle pass. All right, you can get ones for free, which will let you unlock these special weapons. You can't buy them for money, as you can see. You have to like, you know, do events, and there isn't an event right now, so you're just gonna have to wait till the next one. But yeah. But the great thing about event weapons is that even after you like prestige and like go back to tier one, you get to keep all these weapons. Like, so yeah, I'm like at you know tier one, but with like this level 70 Thompson. Although I wish it had the drum clip. Anyway, so yeah, buy what you want, but definitely choose wisely early on. Get like a PDW or one of these carbines. Okay, also, one more thing, perks. There are a lot of good perks in this game, alright? Got things tier 6, tier 7, Berserker gives you more damage, Dexterius gives you so much faster reload, got Bullseye for 20% headshot multiplier, you know, plus 100% ammo. Yeah, there's all sorts of good ones, but I would personally recommend Doom Slayer as the top tier, alright? Definitely recommending that one because with Doom Slayer, you, it's like to plus 10% movement speed. It stacks with the blue vending machine, making you even faster. Right? It is just really good. 10 out of 10 would recommend. You saw what I was able to do before with it, like with the hurting the enemies and stuff like that. Well, now I can do that even better with Doom Slayer. Right? It is just that good. 10 out of 10 would recommend. So yeah. And the thing is, it's like super easy to get because you can get it at just like tier 3. Yeah. Definitely recommend it. Well, I want to talk about your support, alright? You can get an ammo box, you can get rocket launchers, you know, just as the third item, alright? I personally would recommend the tier 8 medical box. Alright, because it can definitely come in clutch, alright? It restores 100 health, and you get a few uses out of it, alright? So yeah, if I would highly recommend using it when you're at half health or below, alright? And if someone else has it, go for theirs when you're at half health or below. Don't just use it to immediately heal when you only take, like, one tiny hit, because if you just spam it like that, you'll run out. When you use it at half health, that's the best time all right that will space it out enough for you to like for it to last throughout the whole match without putting you in too much danger all right so yeah i hope all of this has been useful to you in some way if it has please be sure to leave a like hit subscribe that my friends sayonara